Hey guys, I'm Skye and I love to restore things. I love restoring cars and I love building cars. I also love restoring just other stuff like vintage things that kind of pertain to either motors or cars usually. Today I'm going to be working on an original 1970s moto board. It was one of the first motorized skateboards I ever made. Mine has all the parts but it's not running so let's see if I can clean it up and get it running. All right, so first things first, we gotta strip the whole thing down. So first thing already that I've found is this throttle cable clearly has broken and this is how they chose to fix it. Might have to find some sort of throttle cable and make something to fix this, but this is clearly not gonna work. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I just got the motor off and I got the chain off. It's super cute. Look how tiny that thing is. That's so cute. <laughs> um, I have the front two wheels off and I'm about to take the front trucks off and the rear trucks off. Okay, so I got the trucks off the board. Now my current problem is that the risers are like glued to the board. So I'm gonna need to get those risers off. All right, so it just took a little gentle prying, but we got it done. What I found that I thought was really cool is you can still see the original finish I'm going to try my best to try and match that finish as much as possible. I got both of the rear wheels off. One of them, the side, was I think someone tried to take them off before and failed, but this side was super, super stripped, so I had to use these extractor sockets um, to get them out. One thing I wanted to say, in case someone has one of these and is using this video as kind of a little bit of a guide which is not what this is intended to be but if you are I just wanted to say be very careful when you take the rear wheels off there's a keyway right here make sure not to lose this very tiny keyway because um, you're gonna need that so finally it's time to tear down the tiny little motor Well, I got my first screw that needs to be extracted. That's okay. We've gotten pretty far. And this is the only one so far. So that's pretty good. Here's the tiny itty bitty carburetor. <laughs> it is so cute. Um, probably just gonna replace this. You can get little carbs like this really cheap for no more than $30. So I'm definitely just gonna get another carb. There's no use in wasting my time cleaning this carb. And also it's a two stroke motor, which means it runs the oil in the gas mixed with it so this is probably pretty gross next thing this manifold is quite a mess um so it's gonna need to be deep cleaned i'm gonna try to use it because i don't think i'm gonna be able to find another manifold i'm gonna look here is the motor itself um this is cool you can see the piston on the inside here and you can see it going up and down it looks super super clean the cylinder inside there looks really clean 
and I know that this motor had compression when I took it off so I'm not gonna take the head off because I don't know what it's gonna take for me to find another piston or rings so I don't think it's worth it to take the head off and to clean the inside so I'm just gonna stop here as far as tearing down the motor That would not have been good. I do have the gas tank. I may have lost it, but it's somewhere and I will find it. The bushings are definitely gonna need to be replaced, so I can probably just go up to any skate shop and find some new bushings. So that's it for teardown. Those are all the parts that I'm gonna replace. All right, so it's day two of building the motor board. I had to close the garage door because the wind outside is wild. Um, and if I had it open, you couldn't hear me. I brought in a tub of water and my sprayer so that I don't have to keep going outside to use the hose. Alright, so I'm just going to start popping all the bearings out. So in 1975, Jim McRogan would create his first moto board in his brother's garage. Bill Posey ended up joining Jim to help with the business side of things, and that is how moto boards ended up becoming the first mass-produced motorized skateboard. The board was first mass-produced in 1977, with the price point of $650. $650 in 1977 is a lot of money. So it didn't really do great with avid skateboarders who half the time picked up a skateboard in the first place because they couldn't afford a car. In 1979, the company was doing pretty well and they wanted to move it to a bigger location. So they moved it to the foreign trade zone complex in San Jose. A few years later in 1973, Jim and Bill decided to part ways. They ended up giving Motoboard over to a different parent company that was based out in Los Banos. You can still buy a Motoboard today through that company. Alright, last thing I need to clean is this disgusting gas tank, which I found, by the way. If you don't know how something goes on, but like it's meant to be there, a giant ball of Permatex is not the answer. I got everything clean. So now that everything's clean, I need to run to the store. I need to pick up some new hardware, um, some bushings, a lacquer for this because I'm out um, or I don't have the right color I want it to be. I will be back soon and then I will walk you through assembly. Okay, so I'm just leaving Val Surf right now and so far, no good. Uh, can't find the right size bushings for these trucks. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do. So I'm back from the store and that all ended up being a much bigger event than necessary, but I got all the hardware I needed. I also picked up this polyurethane lacquer um, to coat the sides and the bottom of the board. There's no lacquer left on this board. I don't want to sand it too much, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out all these oil stains and whatnot but at least it'll be protected for future use and future wear. I sanded the board down with 100 grit and then wiped it off with a damp towel. Now I'm going to let it sit and dry while I work on some other stuff and then we'll come back and put the lacquer on it. So here's the problem that I ran into today at the skate shop. Here's our bushings. These are the old bushings. They are terrible. This one, however, this is the top bushing, is really, really bad. This one's huge. So these bushings are a lot bigger than bushings that skaters use today. So what I decided to do is to keep the bottom bushing and replace the top bushing because this used to be roughly this size. So I'm just going to replace this bushing and hope that it's enough. Okay, I did the back truck already. I didn't video it because I knew that it would be super freaking difficult. Um, 
And as much as I like the world to watch me struggle, I just feel like y'all can watch me struggle on the front trucks. Um, if you've never put bushings on before, just buy new trucks. I'm not gonna lie. I had a feeling that this this one was gonna be a lot easier. <laughs> Which is why I didn't let y'all watch me struggle on this one. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the wheels back together, put the sprocket back on it, put the bearings back in them, and then we will reassemble the motor. All right, it's finally time to reassemble the motor. the final day of building the motor board. All I have to do is reassemble it, figure out the throttle cable situation, and we should be able to run it. Trucks are on, now time to mount the motor. So I got the motor mounted and the throttle cable on. The throttle cable was a bitch. So what I ended up doing with the throttle cable is I chased some threads into this piece and then threaded in a modern throttle cable. And then up here, so I just stuck the throttle cable through there and then used this hole as a place to hold the throttle cable in. Okay, so next thing I have to do is mount the gas tank. Now the gas tank is supposed to have a strap that goes across here and hooks on either side of this plate. Mine is missing that, which is why someone had glued it on Permatex. So, I have a plan. Fixed it with an old shoelace just like a true skateboarder would. I had to find something to prop the back up on so that I could spin the wheels. What better than a giant mini bike tire? That's gonna be perfect. The first things first, we check for spark. All right, so it's sparking. That's good. So we have compression, we have spark. We're halfway there. It's a good thing too, because I have another spark plug, but I don't have another coil. And if I had to replace that, we'd be shit out of luck. I've already mixed the fuel. It's a two stroke motor, so you want to mix it with oil. I've also found the largest funnel I could to make this really difficult. I pre-adjusted the carb, I set it to what I think it should fire on, and let's see how this goes. Okay, 
Need some adjustment, but that's not bad. Okay, so the board is tuned and it's ready for our first test ride. Let's hope I don't break my face. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, the board is super freaking scary. It's really, really hard to start. I think it would help if I were heavier because the back wheels want to drag rather than rotate to start. And the only way I can get, get it started is going downhill. Um, it really wants to chuck me off of it when I pull off the throttle. It's a super cool piece, but I think I had a better time building it than I did riding it. But it also doesn't help that it is about to rain and getting really, really cold. So I'm freezing. I'm going to go inside. And thank you guys so much for watching.